Profiles in Cinemania, William H. Hayes. For four long decades, every single film to come out of Hollywood was subject to scrutiny and censorship by a self-appointed group of... No, I'm not talking about the Cinemania Society. Calm down. No, of course, I'm talking about the MPPDA, the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America. From 1930 to 1968, the MPPDA's sole function was to enforce the Motion Picture Production Code, commonly known as the Hayes Code, and grant films who followed it its seal of approval, which was for a time the only way to obtain distribution for, and thus make money on, a movie. The Hayes Code got its moniker from the man responsible for first implementing and enforcing it, William H. Hayes former chair of the Republican National Committee, 46th Postmaster General, one-time Presbyterian deacon, speculated H.B. Lovecraft impersonator, and unsurprisingly for the self-appointed chief of the fun police, a man who looked like he believed the female orgasm was calming propaganda. I mean, just look at the guy. Seriously, go do it. We'll wait. Hayes was an alumnus of the Harding administration, one of the top three most corrupt presidential administrations in American history, and he more or less invented the MPPDA out of whole cloth after being run out of D.C. for accepting bribes during the Teapot Dome scandal. As a committed clergyman and moralist, Hayes was of the opinion that if he can't have any fun, then no one can. Once ensconced in his offices in Los Angeles, Hayes was only too happy to take up the job of policing what he saw as real crime, the depiction of subversive ideas and loose morals on the silver screen. Hayes began with a group of suggestions, but adopted the code in 1930, and then began rigidly enforcing it in 1934. Emphasis on rigidly. First Amendment be damned, Hayes and his cadre of professional joy kills weren't about to let any moral depravity or, God forbid, free thinking warp the minds of the American public. Relax, it wasn't unconstitutional because it was a private group doing the censorship, not the government. See the difference? The general principles of the Hayes Code were these. One, no picture shall be produced which will lower the moral standards of those who see it. Hence, the sympathy of the audience should never be thrown to the side of crime, wrongdoing, evil, or sin. Two, correct standards of life, subject only to the requirements of drama and entertainment, shall be presented. And three, law, natural or human, shall not be ridiculed, nor shall sympathy be created for its violation. Naturally, what constituted moral standards, sin, and Natural or human laws were defined by 1930s-era religious moralists. These were people notorious for the very dim view they took of things like organized labor, racial mixing, dancing, kissing, homosexuality, or really the existence of sex at all, and their enthusiasm for a certain mustachioed German corporal with a penchant for shouting. With a couple of notable exceptions, the suggestions for following the code reads like a grocery list of items obsessed over by the kind of sweaty, palmed, Bible-clutching busybodies who need a cold bath if you show them a bare ankle. It detailed items that must never, ever, ever be seen or heard on screen. Salty language, drug or alcohol use, excessive or lustful kissing, defined as anything open-mouthed and or longer than three seconds, nudity, or provocative dancing, pregnancy, people in bed together, or even the depiction of beds big enough to share, and most especially, anything remotely suggestive of interracial or same-sex love. The two positive aspects of the Hayes Code were its total ban on the depiction of nude children, and the kibosh it put on the grossest, most virulent depiction of bigotry in movies. You know, the kind of thing on which D.W. Griffiths built his career. From the inception of the Hayes Code, film producers found ways to skirt it when they couldn't fight it directly. Hayes himself retired in 1945, and with his departure, the MPPDA and the code it enforced immediately began to weaken. Despite the advent of the McCarthy era and the television industry's establishment of a similar code that would remain in force until 1983, the Hayes Code was relaxed in the 1950s as powerful producers began to boycott the MPPDA's seal of approval. This allowed certain films like The Man with a Golden Arm and Psycho to be unleashed upon a once-coddled public. 
When the 1960s rolled around, the code was considered largely a relic, and by the time Kirk famously kissed Uhura, the MPPDA was supplanted by the Motion Picture Association of America, or MPAA, and the Hayes Code was scrapped and replaced by the rating system we all know and loathe today. Looking back, it's easy to think of a golden time of morals and decency in America, but just remember, these people were just as filthy and depraved as at any other time. They just made sure no one got to buy a ticket to see it. The past is unclear. Sometimes, it's all a haze. This has been another Profile in Cinemania. This episode was written by Ethan Ireland and Andy Slack, and was performed by Ethan Ireland. Music by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Profiles in Cinemania is a production of the Cinemania Society, LLC.